Carbohydrate molecules do not only exist in their straight chain form, they also exist in a cyclic form, in a ring form. In fact, at equilibrium, the ring form of the carbohydrate predominates over the straight chain form. Now the question is, how exactly do we go from a straight chain carbohydrate to its ring counterpart? This is what we want to discuss in this lecture. So we're basically going to use one particular carbohydrate molecule as our example. We're going to use the D-glucose. A glucose is basically a molecule that contains six carbons. The first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon, and sixth carbon. On the top end, we have an aldehyde group. On the bottom end, we have this primary alcohol. And attached to each one of these carbons is an H atom as well as our OH. And this stereochemistry represents the stereochemistry of our D-glucose. Now the D-glucose contains this OH attached to the final stereogenic carbon, carbon number 5, pointing to the right side. We could also use the L-glucose in which this hydroxide group would point to the other side, to the left side. So what exactly is the reaction that transforms this straight chain carbohydrate, the D-glucose, into its ring form? Well, basically, it's an intramolecular reaction, an intramolecular nucleophilic reaction in which one of the hydroxyl groups, one of the alcohol groups, acts as the Lewis base, as the nucleophile, attacking our Lewis acid, the carbon-oxygen double bond, our carbonyl group. Now the question is, we have many of these alcohol groups, we have many hydroxyl groups, we have one, two, three, four, and five. The question is, which one of these hydroxyl groups is capable of acting as our nucleophile? And the answer is, it's only this one, the hydroxyl attached to the fourth carbon, or this one, the hydroxyl attached to our fifth carbon. And the answer is pretty simple. When our hydroxyl attached to a carbon number four attacks the carbon of the carbonyl, we form a stable five-member ring that we call our furanase. If our hydroxyl attached the fifth carbon attacks our carbon of the carbonyl, we form a stable six-member ring that we call the pyranase. And in fact, for the glucose, it's the six-member ring that will predominate over the five-member ring. The six-member ring will be more stable. So the reason that this hydroxyl group and this hydroxyl group doesn't act as a nucleophile because if it did, it would form a ring structure that contains too much strain and so it would be too high in energy and it would be thermodynamically unstable. So once again, any given a carbohydrate contains many alcohol groups. So how exactly do we know which hydroxyl group will act as the nucleophile and attack the carbon of the carbonyl? Basically, the hydroxyl group attached to either the fourth or the fifth carbon will do a good job because this will create a stable, thermodynamically stable and low in energy five or six member ring. Now, the reaction that we're going to discuss in this lecture is the formation of the six member ring in which this hydroxyl group attached to our fifth carbon will act as a nucleophile, creating a bond to this carbon displacing our pi bond. So let's examine this particular reaction in this section here. So we have this oxygen of the alcohol group of our fifth carbon attacks this carbon displacing our pi bond, placing our two electrons onto this oxygen. Now in the next two steps that aren't shown, we basically deprotonate this oxygen and we protonate this oxygen to form these two molecules. Now notice we have molecule number five and molecule number or molecule 
molecule B and molecule C. So these two molecules are stereoisomers of one another. And that's because in this case, our oxygen attacks the carbon from the top side. We have a top side nucleophilic addition. And in this case, it attacks it from the bottom. We have a bottom side nucleophilic addition. In the top side case, we create a molecule that contains this new hydroxyl group that points towards this nucleophilic oxygen. But in this case, we have this same new hydroxyl group that points away from this nucleophilic oxygen. So basically, the bond formed between the oxygen and the carbon is shown in blue. And this oxygen is basically protonated to form this new uh, hydroxyl group. So the hydroxyl group can attack the carbonyl from either the top or the bottom, and this produces two different structures. And their relationship with respect to one another is the anion. So we call these two molecules anomers. One is an alpha anomer and the other one is a beta anomer. The alpha anomer is the molecule that contains our hydroxyl group pointing towards our oxygen. So this is the alpha anomer of D-glucose, while this is the beta anomer of D-glucose. So if the new hydroxyl group points towards the nucleophilic oxygen, the sugar is called the alpha anomer. If it points away, it's called the beta anomer. So we have an addition from the top creates the alpha, an addition from the bottom creates our beta. Now notice in these two particular diagrams, we have an exaggeration of the bond between this carbon, the fifth carbon, carbon and the oxygen and the first carbon and our um, and our oxygen. In real life, these bonds aren't that long. So to actually describe our diagram of our molecule, our cyclic D-glucose more properly, more properly, we have to undergo a rotation and then a transformation. So let's examine how we can transform a two-dimensional diagram of the cyclic D-glucose into the the proper three-dimensional diagram. So, and let's take our B molecule first. So B is the alpha anomer. We take the alpha anomer and we take the bond between the fourth carbon and fifth carbon and we rotate it so that the primary alcohol basically points in this direction and the H points downward. So after we rotate it like so, we have the following molecule. And now all that we have to do is flip the molecule. So let's flip it so that the oxygen is here. So we decrease the length between the oxygen and the carbon. So we have this bond here. And then this carbon number one is the carbon shown here. So we have carbon number one, carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number two, three, four, five, so three, four, and five. And to the fifth carbon, we have this primary alcohol group. Now notice all these groups are pointing up. So the primary group is pointing up, our H will point up, the OH will point up, our H here will point up, and the H here will also point up, while all these other groups basically point down. So the new hydroxyl group that is formed, this is our hemiacetyl and this is our hydroxide group, it points downward in the opposite direction of our primary alcohol. So another way that we can define an alpha anomer is a molecule in which this new hydroxyl group points in the opposite direction of the primary alcohol. Now in the case of molecule C, our beta anomer, we follow the same exact procedure. We rotate the bond between carbon 4 and carbon 5 to produce our primary that once once again points upward and the H points downward and now notice when we flip it so that our oxygen is shown here this is our bond here now this is actually there's a slight mistake this should be 
our bond here in blue and this should be in black and the reason is I'll explain in just a moment so we have our carbon number one and oxygen and this is our blue bond and this is our oxygen and carbon number one so this is the blue bond and this is the blue bond that is described here this black bond here is the bond between this oxygen this oxygen and the fifth carbon the fifth carbon here that contains this primary alcohol so notice in this case our hydroxyl group that is formed and the primary group point to the same side they point up so in this case this hydroxyl points up and this primary also points up and this we call the beta anomer so the alpha d glucopyranase and the beta d glucopyranose uh, remember pyranose is basically our six membered sugar molecule while furanose is the five membered sugar molecule so once again and notice that beta anomers contain the carbon one hydroxyl group this group here that points upward towards the primary alcohol while the alpha anomers these have our carbon one hydroxyl that points away downward away from the primary in the opposite direction and so that's why we call it the alpha and that's why we call this the beta these two molecules aren't the same they are stereoisomers so um, when we have our straight chain molecule it will basically exist in equilibrium with the ring structure and the ring structure at equilibrium will predominate that means we're going to have a lot of this uh, molecule and very little of the straight chain hydrocarbon